This very popular Bitcoin valuation metric hasn't been this low since the FTX crash. Let's check this out. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. In today's video, taking a look at a valuation model metric that is really important in Bitcoin and that is really low and it's giving us a very important signal, also looking at the charts and, of course, also talking a little bit about the news and giving you an inspirational quote at the end. Short but powerful video as I have a very busy day with full of Zoom calls and all that stuff, guys. Now, let's quickly jump into that first part that news the indicator i am talking about is comparing the current price with the 200 moving average guys this is called the meyer multiple the meyer multiple normally doesn't go this low guys the last time we have been that low as this or a little bit lower either was in the ftx crash in 2022 guys now again the meyer multiple is very low it's telling us Bitcoin is oversold. This is the perfect area to buy Bitcoin. The inventor of the Meyer multiple is saying everything below the 2.4 level, as you can see on this chart, the 2.4 level is a dotted line. Everything below that is a beautiful buying opportunity. We even dip to the 0.8 level in this last dip. The Meyer multiple is telling us, yes, you need to be buying Bitcoin now because we will turn up again and go to these higher levels and then it will be telling us, hey, this is the moment to exit the bull market. This is the moment that is the top will be in. We are not near that, we are really low at the moment. This is the lowest point since the 2022 FTX crash. So that's really low, that's an indication to buy. So the Meyer multiple is telling us buy Bitcoin. And if you look at that Meyer multiple, you can see as well that 70% of Bitcoin's history, we were higher than now. So 70% of the whole history of Bitcoin, we were higher than this level. That is an indication that we are at a level that you should be accumulating. That is exactly what the whales have been doing. I've been telling you, showing you already for two or three days. The whales are accumulating. The last four months now, they have been accumulating drastically, as you can see on this chart over here. They just keep buying, buying, buying. Why? Because they understand that we are now in a part of the cycle that everyone is freaking out while they should be zooming out. Everybody is crying while they should be buying. All of the people are now dreaming of Bitcoin going to 40k or hoping of Bitcoin to 40k. And before we know it, we will explode up again to 70k or 80k or 90k and you're at the sidelines. You should be investing. Dollar cost average, every single dip into Bitcoin, guys. It is just simple as that. Now let's jump into some other charts to show you a little bit more where the support and resistance is. Before I jump into those charts, I am gonna answer a question that was asked many times uh, below yesterday's video. Didi, what about all these dead crosses? There is dead crosses on all the charts and a dead cross normally uh, means that we could fall down. Now, first of all, a dead cross is always a lagging indicator. Same like a golden cross, it's a lagging indicator. Mostly a big part of the move already happened before that indicator flashes. Death cross, we already had a huge dip. So if that death cross comes, it's lagging. It's coming a little bit later, but it's still a bearish signal. The positive part is that if it is a lagging indicator, if we rebound really quickly, like we just did with a V-shaped bounce, then that that cross can be unwind and that will mean that we just continue in a bullish part of the bull market. So yes, I do agree, a golden cross and a dead cross, they are good indicators to see what we are doing in the bigger picture of Bitcoin, but they are lagging. So if we bounce very quickly, that dead cross will not have any influence on the rest of that move upwards. Same the other way around with a bull cross. So that's my take on the dead cross. Now let's jump into the charts. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. On this four hour chart, uh, you can see clearly 
V-shaped pounds, that candle closed above that uh, green line that we drew for a long time ago and this next candle opened above it and there's also still bullishness. Uh, so yeah, the, the Bollinger Band is even uh, going up a little bit. So I think there is a CME gap around 58k level. So we should try to reach that CME gap, fill that CME gap and then I will take my profits. Uh, I think there will be a small pullback. So let's see what all the indicators tell us. There was already a sell signal. Uh, you could already have taken your profits. I still stayed in the trade because I felt uh, bullishness at the moment, but you will see this later in the video as well. Now, let me see over here, guys. Uh, the weekly, that is the one that I want to take and look at, and you should be taking a look at as well. This weekly close is an important close. In three days and 15 hours, so there will be Sunday evening uh, around 6 a p.m. I think in uh, Europe uh, we will have a close and we will need to see how this candle closes. This candle if it closes around 58k it will turn green with a very long wick and a very tiny body that is mostly a very bullish trade. And you might say no yeah but that it was already this candle as well did and it was not that bullish. Yeah we did end up uh, all the way to 70k again and but then we crashed but still it is not bearish. It doesn't mean we will go down normally um, this trade over here this candle same we went up from uh, the 60 levels to that 72k level. Often these candles when they turn out like that they are bullish, just like you can see over here, 40k all the way to 73k. So this is a positive close, if you ask me, when we will close around 58k, guys. Now, let's jump into one more chart to show you uh, something really interesting on the charts. And that is this one over here. This chart is showing us that now there is almost an all-time high on the wallets that own 0 0.1 Bitcoin. So this yellow line is the wallets of 0 0.1 Bitcoin, more than 0 0.1 Bitcoin. This is the all-time high over there, and we are turning up again. So we are almost making an all-time high when it comes to people that hold 0 0.1 Bitcoin in their wallet. This means that the retail slowly starts to accumulate Bitcoin again. If you look at the previous bull market, for example, over here, 2017, this is all retail buying because at that moment, not that many people bought Bitcoin yet and if they could afford 0.1 Bitcoin that was mostly retail and they bought a shitload of Bitcoins at that moment. Over here you can see that increase again in that 2020 bull market. Not as big as over here because here institutional investors and governments and countries start to buy as well and they bought more than 0.1. But we can see a slow increase again over here which means that retail still, the retail understands this dip could be the last dip and they are starting to buy Bitcoin. That is my take on the market at the moment. So 58k and then let's see what happens on then. I hope you really enjoyed all those charts guys. So short term, we should be trying to fill that CME gap around 58k. Uh, then I will also be taking profits with my trades because my trades, I'm still in the trade. You can see over here, it's now around 37% profit. I will take my profits the moment that we get near to that Bollinger Band top or that CME gap, then I will definitely take profits because mostly then we have a small pullback. And you know, profit is profit. I'm happy with 37 to 40% profit on that trade guys. Um, Long term, same story every time again and again. Four year cycle, it will be a top in 2025. Zoom out, don't freak out, stop crying, start buying as we have still 12 months of bullishness ahead of us. All the way into September 2025, we will see Bitcoin slowly going higher, higher and higher. And if the top will be 100K or 150K or 300K or 500K, we all don't know and we all don't care. As long as we understand that if you buy around 60k and we go to 120k, you make 100% profit within 12 months. There is no other asset that's going to give you this. So yes, the answer to all those DMs, I would be buying Bitcoin right now. The inspirational part for today comes out of a question I have been asked a lot of times in the last couple of years. The question is, did he? Why is it that you don't own a house? Why is it that you don't own a car? Are you really that rich? Or are you just pretending to be rich? What is it that you don't have the drive to buy all that stuff? And that is our philosophy of life. And my answer is, that is because of our philosophy of life. We are a minimalist family. We can be rich, but we don't need to show it to others to feel happy. We feel happy because we are together as a family. We are traveling the world as a family. We are discovering the world as a family. We are living adventures as a family. And yes, we have our ups and downs, 
but we don't need any materialistic stuff to pull us up from a down. And a lot of people think different. A lot of people, when they feel down, they think, ah, well, let's buy some new clothes or a new iPhone or a new car. Yeah, I will feel happy. We refer to that as short-term happiness. Yes, you will feel happy with your new iPhone for a week or two weeks. And then there comes this new news item, hey, the iPhone 17 or 16 is coming out. And you will feel unhappy with that iPhone that you just bought that made you really happy. Because now you want that newest thing again. So we as a family decided that we don't want to have our lives controlled by that commercial, materialistic lifestyle. All of those commercials forcing me to buy all that stuff because else I would not be happy if I don't own that. We don't believe that. We don't believe in the ownership of a kick-ass huge villa. Why would we want that if we can just rent it and use it for a certain time? We don't believe in owning a Lamborghini. Why? Because I should show people that we are rich. I should like make people envious on the fact that we can buy a Lamborghini. Are people really buying the Lamborghini because it's the best car or because it's a fast car? And if they buy it, if it is a fast car, where can you drive fast? You're like, it's 120 kilometers an hour in the Netherlands and in Germany, 130. Yeah, nice, that car can drive 300. So we as a family decided to not support all of that, you know, materialistic lifestyle that is forced upon people to keep people poor. And yes, I understand that if you have millions, it won't make you poor, that Lamborghini or that car. But it will force all those other people around you to envy you for money, not for lifestyle. And that will force them to think, ah, we should also own a beautiful car or a beautiful house. And they will make shitloads of debts to own that car or that house. And that is how the government keeps them poor. Just show them these reels and stories and commercials of very successful people that have a shitload of cars and big houses. All people should dream about that lifestyle and make themselves very poor to reach that lifestyle. That is what we don't want to support. We just live life as a family in a normal way, like every single normal family could live. Of course, we live a little bit more luxury. Yes, of course, we rent a little bit more expensive houses, but we don't own them. We have our capital working for us and we will use the return on investments of that capital that is working for us to rent all of that stuff. And of course, also we do our calculations sometimes. So if I need to rent a motorbike for three months and it would be the same price as buying that motorbike, yeah, I would buy that motorbike. And then when we will leave that country, yes, of course, we will donate that motorbike to a charity or whatever it is, because I will lose that amount of money for renting or buying either way. That's completely different, it's like small stuff. But when it comes to houses, and when it comes to jewelry, and when it comes to all that stuff, we just don't want to lead by example to our children that it's all about accumulating wealth to feel happy. Because that's not true. I was wealthy when I had my companies, I'm wealthy now. There is no difference when I didn't have any wealth. I felt happy with playing football, with just walking the beach, with all that stuff. It's still the same for me, and I want to lead by example for the children therein. They should be feeling happy without wealth. Wealth should be secondary when it comes to importance to live life. It should be about living life to the fullest. And you don't only need money for that. You can do beautiful beach walks, you can do the beautiful hikes. There's a shit of free things in life that you can do to feel really, really wealthy and happy. So that is the reason that we don't spend that much capital to all that stuff that we already know of, maybe we are too old, like 46, influencer. Maybe we already experience everything that all these youngsters now will experience at the end of the day, like, oh shit, yeah, I bought so many cars, I bought so many houses, but now I have a burnout, I still don't feel happy because people don't respect me for the person that I am. They only respected me for the car or the house that I had. But as a person, I didn't evolve. As a person, I got stuck in materialistic lifestyles that people only adored because of that rich, because of that money, because of those bitcoins. I want people to love me for who I am as a person and I want my kids to understand that they should be loved for who they are as a person, not for what they own, not for what they have, not for what they show to others, for who they are, for their norms, for their values, for their passion, for the revolution of Bitcoin, to change the complete world, to decentralize the world, to take away the power from all those centralized entities like governments and central banks. That is what I want to teach my children not to walk around as a sheep 
accumulating all kinds of stuff, like because all the other sheep are accumulating a lot of stuff to show off to other people that don't even give a fuck about you. That is what I don't want to do and not lead by example as a parent. So that's my answer to that often asked question. Uh, maybe I will rent a Lamborghini, drive a circle and show you, ooh, I am, I am able to afford that. That's not us, guys. That's not us. So I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about our minimalist mindset? And what do you think about what I just taught you? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. An amazing day.